subscribe, like, comment and share to support the channel. Thank you for the support. The story begins with a voice asking if you guys wanted to hear something interesting. The voice says that there is just one human being, all the top level gangs in the world fear the most. It was a man that they called Pietro, similar to John Wick. But the surprising thing about this killer is that he is an old man in his 60s. The scene changes to a young man bleeding on the ground. He was seen talking to a man that stood in front of him. He talked about if things had continued like normal, he would have left his mark as a legend but there are now thousands of killers after him, and he has lost all his money too. He then asks the figure if he thought that it was really pathetic, the figure was wearing a costume mask, the man continues to tell the figure that the legend, who was loyal to his organization is now under threat of being killed, he soon asks the figure if he was that legend, the legend called Pietro, it's revealed that numerous dead bodies surrounded the man, wearing the mask as he scratched his ear, the bleeding man continues to say that it doesn't make any sense, there were thousands of eyes on him and going after his head, but somehow he was still not dead, let alone not even found. The bleeding man understood that the masked figure was a legend, but was still curious about how that was possible. Do you want to know the answer? said the masked figure as he slowly walked towards the bleeding man. He tells him that even if he had thousands no tens of thousands of eyes on him, they would never find him. The masked figure then kneels before the bleeding man, removing his mask while telling him that it was shame about the Pietro they were looking for. The bleeding man could not believe what he was seeing. He thought about how it was impossible. Sweat began to drip down his face as he realized why they couldn't find him. The masked figure then pulls out a cigarette, aiming a pistol with a silencer to the bleeding man, making him even more shocked over the fact that he was Pietro. The scene changes to three months ago. A voice is telling his boss that it will be really bad if he keep doing this. A pair of old hands is seen placing a sign on a shelf. The voice continues to speak, telling the boss that if he doesn't even take their calls and won't admit it himself, at this rate, he wouldn't even live for three months. The old man could be seen staring at a bunch of pills on his hand and on the table. The old man continues to tidy his shop, knowing that he wasn't afraid of death, as he had always lived his life by walking a tightrope between life and death. He had dedicated 50 years of his life to work, and he had no regrets at all. He continues to think that he had lived his entire life without any regrets but was constantly staring at a book on how to take portrait pictures. He soon thinks about how his life was, looking at a reflection of himself in the mirror. He realized that he never had a picture of himself taken, F in the chat boys. The door to his shop soon opens. A young high school girl enters and greets the old man. She tells him that she was here as she wanted to get some middle school textbooks. The old man didn't respond straight away but paused silently for a moment before turning around with a smile on his face and says welcome. He tells her that they have all the books except the ones they don't. She then asks if he had any middle school textbooks. The old man replied that they had editions from the 1960s to 2020, including the ones for other nations. He then asked her what year she wanted. She tells him that she needed the most recent one. She informs him that the textbooks were for her younger sibling. The old man took note of that and began to look for her textbook while asking her if she went to the high school across the street here. She tells him yes. The old man then points out that she must be in her last year as he had saw her tag color. The young girl was impressed and asked if he knew the name tag colors too. The old man laughs and informs her that he knew everything about the neighborhood. But then she realizes something. She looks at what the old man had brought out. It was a stack of textbooks that were new and covered in plastic. She tells him that this was not what she wanted. She continues to tell him that she only only had a thousand one, so she couldn't buy all of this plus they were brand new as well. The old man tells her that he didn't need it anymore so he just wanted to give it to her. But the young girl was still hesitating to take his offer. This made the old man rip the plastic cover off the textbooks. That's when he tells her that the textbooks were now used and of lesser value. She tells him that he didn't need to be so nice. But the old man replies that he could tell from her eyes that she really loves her younger sibling. So be nice when you can, or you'll end up regretting it said the old man. The young girl soon became flustered over what to call the old man as. The old man then tells her to just call him boss, as this was how Koreans refer to shop or business owners in general. She then asks him if he had any regrets. This question made the old man stop what he was doing, was a sad look on his face. He tells her that he had a lot of regrets as he had lived a long life. A past memory is seen where a little girl is crying and being pulled away. A voice shouts out that they couldn't do anything about it and that this was the only way that he and his daughter could both live. The memory ends as the old man tells the young girl that there is nothing you can do about what's already happened. He was sure that she wouldn't get what he means right now, so he advises her to be nice to her younger sibling, and to not do anything she'll regret. He then tells her to go back while she could. Then I won't kill you said the old man. The young girl held a knife in her hand as she stood on top of the counter. 
Her face was filled with shock over how the old man knew about what she was going to do. The old man continues to speak, telling the young lady that he knew the faces of all the students from that school, but he didn't recognize hers so he had to at least check. He then asks her if she said she was in her last year. He then tells her that it was a shame for her, as it has only been two years since the school across was built. Damn it, thought the young girl as she recalled what she said to the old man earlier. The old man reveals to her that he was a person who has smelt blood all his life, and asked her if she thought she could cover the scent of her dagger with perfume. The young girl immediately went in for the kill, thinking that the old man knew from the start, which left her with no choice now. But just as she was about to attack him, she thought about how she was the one was holding the knife. But somehow it felt like she was the one who was going to die. The old man gave out major main character vibes as he stares at her. The old man releases his hockey powers which startles the young lady. Instead of attacking him she took a defensive stance. The old man then places the textbooks that he had wrapped onto the counter, telling her to take the books as he knew that she wasn't lying about her younger siblings. He continues to tell her that he had worked in this field for five decades, so he can tell just from the ice if she was lying or not. He then asks her if she was from the honor orphanage like him and realized that they still teach the same things now. Hearing that question made her flustered which reveals the answer to his question. Seeing her flustered made the old man realize that she hadn't learned this lesson yet. He talked about how if their organization fails at a volunteering project, that means it's time for plan B says as he lunges towards the young lady. He grabs onto her throat in an instant and brought her to the back of the shop. As he held onto her throat, the young girl wondered about what the plan B was that he talked about earlier, when all of a sudden, two unknown men appeared from above, they instantly began to shoot at the old man and the young lady, but he was fast enough to dodge their attacks as he leaped forward while covering the young lady, as they land on the ground, he tells her that if she fails her mission, even the volunteers need to be eliminated, as she laid on the ground she realizes something, the old man was bleeding from his torso, the unknown men started to shoot again at the old man and young girl as they run for cover through the store. The old man turns around to face the two men with a pistol in hand, but the unknown men had managed to capture the young lady. The old man was shocked to see this. One of the men took the chance to punch him straight in his face. The old man could only curse his body for not moving the way he wanted it to. The man who gave the punch wondered if the old man was really Pietro. Another man with a coat appears, telling his senior that he was sorry for this as Pietro was a renowned assassin who's kept the first rank due to all of his accomplishments, but the man in the coat realized that even he couldn't beat cancer. It's revealed that this man's code name was Octopus. Pietro tells him to stop with the bullshit and wonders why he was trying to kill him. Octopus reveals to him that the boss wasn't comfortable. Pietro was alarmed to hear this and wonders why the boss was uncomfortable with him. Octopus tells him that there were thousands of people after him. It's no use crying over split milk, after all, the reward for his head was 7.6 billion. Pietro notices that it was the same amount as his account. Octopus tells him that he was right. It was the money that Pietro had worked so hard to save his entire life. But for that money to go to someone else, how f-i-n-g awesome is that? Octopus then tells Pietro to die by his hands. Another punch is sent flying into Pietro's face. The other men continue to beat him, telling Pietro that he should have stayed quiet and just dug his grave, asking Pietro about why he had to make things annoying for them. With another massive punch, he sends Pietro flying to the back of the store. They looked at him sitting on the ground and talked amongst themselves. They believed that Pietro had been knocked out. One of the men talked about how he was so nervous on the way here but was a lot easier than he expected. Octopus then proceeds to finish the job, but as he entered the back where Pietro was, Pietro tells him that this was a small gift. He tosses a flashbang directly into Octopus's face. He could only curse in his mind as the flashbang was too close for him to react in time. The flashbang went off and soon lighted the entire store. He's gone, shouted the men after realizing that Pietro had led them there on purpose. Octopus tells them to chase after him as he couldn't have gone far since he was bleeding severely. As the men chased after Pietro the young girl could only stare in silence over what just happened. The heavy rain continues to pour throughout the night. The scene changes to a kid's playground. Our boy Pietro was breathing heavily as he continued to bleed out while taking shelter in the kid's playground. He soon collapses onto the cold and wet ground, thinking about how he couldn't even get to put up a proper fight. He thought about how he had gotten so old. He started to look back on his life, about how his entire life was just work, while others were studying. He bled 365 days in a year trying to learn to hold a knife. When others were learning love through calls, he learned to wiretap until he bled from his ears. When others learn to date and love, 
he came Russia's spy and lived with constant frostbite. While others started families and carried out ordinary lives, he survived endless threats in the midst of a terrorist organization. He risked his life for work for decades, but everything changed when a new boss stepped in. The boss called him a senile ass. He had high expectations because of how famous Pietro is, but noted that he had gone soft from old age in his sickness. The boss then decides it's time to throw him away. Pietro had gave up everything for his work. It's not like he wanted a life of splendors, but he wonders if this was all his life amounts to. He can't treat me like this. Pietro thought as he tried his best to stand up once again. He couldn't die like this. He can't lose that money. That money was all he could think of as a memory flashes back to his daughter, but his eyes soon rolled back, and our boy soon drops onto the cold wet ground as the rain continued to pour down from the skies. The scene changes to the flower temple which was Octopus's base. The two men who attacked Pietro were upset over the 7.6 billion they could have gotten if they killed him. One of them wonders why there was such a high reward for old geezer like Pietro IV. The other guy tells him that it was because Pietro was a legend but his friend didn't care. He tells him that he even threw away his kickboxing champion title for their current life. He pulls out a picture of Pietro while telling his friend to watch him as he was the one that was going to kill the old man and succeed in life. But a voice speaks out, asking them if they knew that's the first picture he ever took. The two men were alarmed to see someone beside them and wondered if it was Pietro. They compared the photo to the young man that stood before them saying that it wasn't Pietro but just somebody who wore the same clothes. The young man continues to tell them that it was the first picture of him that was ever taken. He continues to tell them that he didn't get it either. When he woke up he was already like this. The two men wondered about what the young man was saying to himself. They soon tell him that he was in the wrong place and that this place wasn't for a student. But the young man grabs onto his wrist, telling him that he knew where he was and that he wanted them to guide him to Octopus instead of wasting his time. The two men then exchanged brief looks with one another after hearing what the young man said. They soon realized that he was also in the same field as them. So they asked the young man about what he came here for, but then tells him that he had to die. A loud thud sound is heard. The man who threw the punch was caught off guard for something. He couldn't believe that the young man was able to stop his powerful punch. Look at those veins. The man wondered how he was so strong and that he was able to block it with just one hand. But the young man's expression couldn't be seen. A flashback is replayed from when Pietro had been punched in the face by the same man. Yes, I am, said the young man. He then squeezes the fist belonging to the man which causes him to scream in pain. His friend took a knife and started to attack the young man from the back, but the young man sends out multiple punches that landed on various parts of the knife-wielding asshole's body. The man who threw the punch then grabs a knife, asking the young man about where he came from. The young man tells him that being good with the knife is third rate. The man soon wondered what the hell was going on. The young man continues to tell him that being good with all weapons is second rate, and first rate is the ability to use anything as a weapon. The young man had selected an octopus tentacle as his main weapon. John Wick has his pencil, our boy has his octopus tentacle. The man couldn't believe that he was going to use an octopus tentacle. He lunges towards the young man asking him about what he was talking about but the young man snaps the knife off of his hands with the octopus ten tentacle. The man couldn't believe what he was seeing. The young man soon moves behind him and wraps the octopus tentacle around his neck. It causes the man to gasp for air. The young man begins to travel around the kitchen with the man tied to the octopus tentacle. They soon reach the steaming boiling hot pot of food. The young man then slams him headfirst straight into the pot of food. The man could tremble in pain as he laid on the ground asking the young man about who he was. The young man then picks up the photo on the ground. The scene changes to when it was introduced that Pietro had a bounty of 7.6 billion for his head, and that it was revealed that there were thousands of people after him. Octopus disgusting face was shown again from when he asked him to die by his hand. The flashback ends as the young man asks them if this was the only picture they had of Pietro. It turns out that Pietro, the man who was called the best in the field, woke up as his younger self. The young man lights a cigarette telling the two men that thousands of them won't ever find him. As the old man Pietro they were looking for is dead. Pietro had become young once again. We were so close but we lost him. Shouted a voice as a car is seen. Octopus and the young girl were sitting inside of it. Octopus talks out loud that soon Pietro's official wanted order will be announced. But before that happens, Octopus needed to get him first. He mentions that Pietro was almost dead because of cancer and that it will be great if he can share with his juniors. He then asks the young girl if he was right. We return to the flower temple, where Pietro is still inside and was looking through the rooms. He opens the door to see an empty room. 
he then talks about how Octopus extends his life. The scene changes to an underground train station. A group of civilians were staring at someone, wondering who it was and what he does. It turns out that they were looking at our boy Pietro's body. Yummy am I right guys? Pietro looks at his reflection in the mirror, wondering how this makes sense as he touches his face. He realizes that the bullet wounds that penetrated his abdomen had disappeared, along with the cancer cells that were sucking his life away were gone as well. Pietro knew that this wasn't his imagination. He had really become his younger self. He continues to wonder about how something like this happened. He didn't know why this happened, but was sure that they won't be able to recognize him now. No matter where they go, there should be traces of Piero, but the old Pietro that they're looking for will be nowhere to be found. But more importantly, Pietro needed to buy some clothes. Our boy's body is too thick. Look at his clothes hanging on for dear life. A voice catches his attention as it tasks whether Haben's 80 million one payment for the commercial had came through. Another voice replied saying that the account balance was still only 100,001. It turns out that the voices belonged to two men who were smoking in the toilet. They continued to talk about Haben who didn't have enough money for his bitch of a mom's medicine who was about to die. The friend laughs and tells him that Haben should have read the contract properly. They talked amongst themselves about how they used the money to buy branded goods. But as they discussed about wearing branded clothes to make people lose their focus and sign the contracts, Pietro calls out to them. Hey you youngsters, said Pietro which catches their attention. He tells them that this was a non-smoking area and asked them to smoke outside. The two gangsters wondered who Pietro was. One of them pointed their cigarette towards him, warning him that if he disrespects them, then they were going to beat him the F up. But all Pietro wanted to know if there were any other smokers besides them. The other gangster soon started to hit Pietro's head, telling him to get lost and that since he was in a good mood today, he was going to let him go. Pietro decides to walk away knowing that he shouldn't waste time on these guys, so he decides not to waste time, and end this quickly, our boy had locked the door to the toilet, just like that scene from Kingsman, Pietro then walks back to the two gangsters, he pulls up the sleeve of his shirt, revealing his jacked arm as he tells the gangsters that he was going to show them what happens when they disrespect the adults in Korea, a country of courteous people, the gangster couldn't believe that Pietro was still talking to them in an informal tone, he decides that they should kill him today. He raises his hand up and tells Pietro to come here, with his left arm hitting his neck and his right arm hitting his stomach at the same time. The combined attack left the fat gangster speechless. He soon falls over after being hit by Pietro. The other gangster immediately takes out a knife while asking Pietro about if he knew who he was. Pietro tells him that he didn't know him but knew what kind of knife he was holding. It was a pocket knife. He then tells the gangster that he was holding it the wrong way. He warns the gangster that he was going to cut off his finger if he held it like that but the gangster didn't care about the warning. He continues to taunt Pietro by calling him a bitch. Pietro then looks at him with his eyes glowing bright red, showing and telling him that if he was going to stab him, then his arm shouldn't be in front of him. The gangster had enough and lunges towards Pietro with his pocket knife while telling him to shut the F up. In three short motions, Pietro managed to knock the knife out of his hand and grab onto it before stabbing him with it in three places on his body. The gangster held his neck after being attacked and kneeled onto the ground while screaming. Pietro informs him that he didn't get stabbed because if he did, he would have died three times already. The gangster soon backs into a corner of the toilet while asking Pietro about who he was. Pietro tells him that he didn't know about the illegal things he did, but if he knew who he was, that was when Pietro pierces the gangster's shoulder with his thumb causing him to scream out in pain. He warns the gangster that he needed to die here if he knew Pietro's identity. The gangster had peed himself. Pietro sees this and realizes that his pants won't do. He then tells the gangster to stay on the right path from now on. Pietro then opens his bank account to see that it was empty. His entire 7.6 billion one was gone. Look at our boy dressed like John Wick. He continues to stare at his phone as he walked, thinking about how he told them not to touch that money. His face was filled with a determined look as he decided how much those guys were worth to him now. As he continued to walk, he overheard a student couple talking about how they had gotten a scholarship from the Glory Group. This causes a flashback into Pietro's past. He had grew up in the Honor Orphanage, a place that was managed by a small religious facility. And now, 50 years later, it has become a huge cartel that spread its influence in numerous political places, using the Glory Group as a mask. And since it was the company that he brought up, he needed to dissolve this company. The scene changes to an old storage unit. A man was sitting alone while being surrounded by meat. He asks somebody a question on why he came alone to get him. Turns out it was Octopus. He tells the man that was sitting that since he wasn't Pietro, there was no need to bring anyone else. 
the man laughs at his reply, telling him that the guys from Glory Group were being so greedy and that if they had trusted Pietro, they would all have died early, but Octopus didn't care if he died early or not. He tells the man that they should stop the conversation here now and end this quickly. He asks the man if he knows that finishing it quickly will be less painful, but the man continues to laugh and calls Octopus a child. He tells Octopus that he had basically set up a festival for him. Octopus was now surrounded by a bunch of grown men, not in a porno way. These guys were from the Vacna Mercenary, the best civilian military enterprise in the West since 1984. The man knew that Octopus wasn't one of the Twelve Disciples of Glory Club, which made him wonder why Octopus was being so arrogant. He then tells his mercenaries to get going as their guest was waiting. He tells them to treat him well. The mercenaries that surrounded Octopus immediately rushed towards together, but Octopus simply stood still as they came closer to him. After some time, the man was seen shivering in fear as he sat on the floor. He calls it impossible. He continues to shake in fear, wondering how a human could do that. Octopus looks at him and tells him that for someone who prepared the feast, it was a lot blander than he thought. E.W. Octopus had wrapped himself around the mercenary in an ungodly way. It was revealed that his rank was B+, and that his trait was full-body flexibility. He was also the rank one in jiu-jitsu in Korea. The man shouts at Octopus to not come any closer. He begs him to go away just as Octopus lunges himself towards him with his head twisted the wrong way. The scene returns to the flower temple, where the two men who attacked Pietro at the start continued to lay on the ground after being knocked out. Pietro questions about whether the CCTV were destroyed and that there were no traces of weapons. The young girl agrees with him which made Octopus realize that there was only one person who could have done this. He tells her that it was Pietro. He was surprised to learn that the old man was staying alive and had started to kill his guys. He continues to tell her that Pietro's wanted order was going to be issued soon, so no matter what, he needed to get to him first. He tells the young girl to report to him once she finds his location, but all she could think of was that sweet old man who had given her brand new textbooks for her younger siblings as well as saving her life back in the store, but her flashback ends as she agrees to octopus orders. They soon open the door to a room, a servant was with Octopus and the young lady, he spots something and noted that they were not open today, he asks our boy about what brought him here and if he had a meeting with them, Pietro tells them that he didn't but he does have a grudge, Octopus wondered if he got pressured for his credit, Pietro tells him yes and that it was a large amount, he tells him that it was about 7.6 billion, Octopus continued to wear a smile on his face, but it soon became serious as he orders his man to close the doors. Octopus figures that the young man who sat in front of them was connected to Pietro, but even if he wasn't, Octopus ensures Pietro that he wasn't getting out of here alive now, but Octopus felt that something was off, he looks at the young man, wondering how much he knew about Pietro as he was sure that he was a part of their club, but they had no information on this guy, Octopus continues to wonder if the young man in front of them was Pietro's hidden son or disciple, but knew that's not it as Pietro was always alone, an intense eye. Staring contest soon began between Octopus and Pietro. Octopus then points two fingers up, telling Pietro that he was going to give him a chance to live as he had two choices. The first choice was to tell them Pietro's location and then he can leave. The second choice was to die by a gunshot to his head for resisting. Pietro thought about it and tells Octopus that he didn't want either of those choices. He then takes a piece of Octopus with his chopsticks, telling Octopus that there's yet to be someone who survived after hearing this. He then presented them with a third option. The third option was that. He was Pietro. Pietro had finally revealed himself as Pietro to Octopus' head and that he was the one responsible for the deaths of his subordinates. Octopus couldn't believe what Pietro had said so he tells him to repeat. Pietro couldn't believe that a young man like him was already having hearing problems. So he repeats himself. I killed those two, said Pietro. Octopus couldn't understand what the young man in front of him was saying as he didn't believe that it was Pietro so he continued to assume that Pietro didn't kill his subordinates which makes things messy, but then he wondered if the guy in front of them was telling the truth, and that if Pietro wasn't the one that killed them, then why the hell did this young man attack them? Pietro continued to chill as he sat in front of them while eating the food on the table, but Octopus soon calls out to him, telling him that the gun the servant and girl were holding was real, so they needed to be clear on one thing, how are you related to Pietro? Pietro didn't answer as something catches his eye. He noticed that the young high school girl was behind Octopus and was wielding a knife, so he continued to eat the food while asking Octopus if he wanted to know. Octopus tells him that he does so Pietro offers him one method of knowing, just kill me, was Pietro's method as he tells Octopus. 
He couldn't believe it and tells Pietro that it was the perfect method as he was really good at it. He tells his servant to hold his breath as he aims the gun at Pietro, but something else happens. Two fast objects were sent flying into the neck of the servant and into the silencer of the pistol that he held. The young high school girl turned to see that the servant had fallen to the ground without firing a single shot. She noticed that there was a chopstick inside his neck. She couldn't believe that it had pierced his vital point. Pietro then grabs onto another pair of chopsticks. John Wick style everyone. She looks at him and notices that he was around her age. And yet none of her friends of the glory club were capable of doing that. Actually she was sure that if you went around the whole country, you wouldn't be able to find anyone who could do what he just did. Octopus stares at Pietro before telling him that what he did was cool. He tells him that even if it's just by luck, he's got guts to try that which made Octopus like him. He then questions Pietro about what club he was with as there was no way he wouldn't know someone as skilled as him. So he offers Pietro the chance to join them instead as he reaches for something behind him. You son of a bitch, shouted Octopus as he unleashes a hail of bullets towards where Pietro was sitting. Our boy sees this coming from a mile away and immediately flips over the table to be a shield to block the incoming bullets. But seeing this reaction made Octopus laugh as he tells Pietro that he really was a kid, and that this wasn't a movie as a table like that couldn't stop bullets. Blood could be seen spilling out from beneath the table. Octopus walks towards the table while telling Pietro that he was giving him one last chance to spit out what he knew. He also noted that killing someone with such skill was such a shame. Octopus moves the side of the table quickly with his gun ready telling Pietro to come to him so that they could get to the cleaning part. But something surprises him as he looked over to where Pietro was. He couldn't believe that the red liquid he saw on the ground wasn't blood but was instead chili oil. He quickly darts around the place to look for Pietro. He searches behind the pillar but still couldn't find where he was. He looks sideways repeatedly wondering where he was now or if he was a ghost. But then he notices something above that made him go, oh shit. Pietro was hanging onto the ceiling of the restaurant while giving the most sadistic bombastic side eye to Octopus. Our boy uses the water gun skill from Pokemon and spits a massive amount of chili oil onto Octopus' face as he calls him a son of a bitch. Pietro then manages to change the trajectory of the bullets by hitting Octopus' arm as he fired at him. With a swift motion Pietro manages to disassemble his gun in the middle of the fight before landing a powerful bitch slap right onto Octopus's face that sends him flying upwards. Octopus couldn't believe that he couldn't see anything and that Pietro was too fast for him. He continues to wonder if this bastard was really a kid. Pietro then goes in for the most loving hug with his hands. With a slight twist of hands around Octopus's neck, Pietro had helped him fix his neck problems. It was so good to the point that Octopus simply had to lay on the ground to rest for a while. What a good guy Pietro is. Seeing that Octopus was sleeping peacefully on the ground after that neck massage, Pietro turns to leave him but Octopus was thinking about how this made any sense. He thought about how he had gone up against hundreds of opponents throughout the course of over 10 years, but this was his first time seeing someone this skilled at that age, the do or die tactic. A flashback is seen where Octopus was younger and in training, the instructor tells them that they will face a strong enemy someday, so they needed to make use of the moment their guard was down and take them by surprise. The do or die tactic had stuck to Octopus since that day, since then he had polished a technique only he could use. The scene changes to him wrapping his body around another kid and strangling him hard. A voice shouts at him to squeeze the boy even hard in order to kill him, but continues to tell him to keep this in mind. The biggest threat to him was showing his back to his enemy when he thought that he won. Don't trust yourself, was told as Octopus watches the kid that he strangled suffer, but all Octopus could think of was that he had finally did it. He was now confident that he won't ever lose to anyone, recalling those memories gave him a source of energy as he woke up. He immediately grabs onto Pietro's leg after he had turned his back on him, with the speed like the flash. He wraps himself all across Pietro's arms and body with ease, twisting and pulling Pietro's body into various directions that made even the devil turn away from this sight. Pietro screams in pain while Octopus simply smiled in the moment. He continues to taunt Pietro as he suffocates telling him that he was just born when he got into this field, and that he had been alive way longer than him has. Do you get it now? You little shit. Die! Was all Octopus shouted as he continued to squeeze the life out of Pietro. But a voice calls out to him saying wow that took a while. Hearing that voice made Octopus look to see where it came from. He was shocked to see that Pietro was standing behind him which made him wonder who he was strangling before then. He looks down and sees that it was his servant, making him wonder if he had mistook him for the kid because he couldn't see. Looking back at Pietro made Octopus feel something as he had been doing this line of work for over 10 years. 
which was why he knew for sure that he was going to die by the hands of the man that stood before him. Seeing Pietro made he realize that he might just be at the level of the twelve disciples, but he changes his mind as he realizes that he might be way above that level. Octopus then started to tell Pietro to wait and that they should talk it out instead. He immediately grabs onto the high school girl telling Pietro that he could have her. Even though she may not be that experienced she would be quite useful, but she tells him that she couldn't go with him, but Octopus tells her to shut the F up as they were in the middle of an important conversation. Okay deal Pietro tells him as he expected from a glory club member, he noted that Octopus has some quick decision making skills, Octopus was happy to hear that and considered it a done deal, he immediately turns to leave the room while telling Pietro to take her with him and to pretend that none of this ever happened, but all he could think of was finding out who Pietro was in chopping of his certain part, the do or die tactic, those words causes Octopus to pause in his steps as he heard it. Pietro continues to tell him that if you show your back thinking you've won, Octopus recalls the same words that have been spoken to him when he was younger, he recalls the moment that the instructor had taught them about when they would face a strong enemy, and the moment that Pietro revealed the bounty amount of 7.6 billion along with admitting to killing two of his subordinates, everything started to click within his head as Octopus couldn't believe that it was possible, the instructor who had taught him in his youth was the very same Pietro that now stood before him as a younger version of himself. Pietro then asks Octopus if he recalls what he said to him back then. Octopus repeats the words that Pietro had told him, of the people who learn who Pietro is. Not one is alive. Bingo! shouted Pietro as he lunges forward with his hand stretched out to Octopus, with a swift snapping motions across the various body parts of Octopus. Pietro had given him the ultimate chiropractor treatment that we see on TikTok. He had twisted and snapped his body into an ungodly manner thus killing him in the most painful way known to mankind. The scene changes to a tattoo on somebody's back. A voice states that it had been confirmed that Octopus is dead, and that the CCTV footage inside had been deleted and when they got there, there were no traces left. Oh how amusing, said another voice as he commented that an old man on the verge of death after being shot by a bullet returns within a day and kills four trained killers without leaving a trace. A bounty of 7.6 billion, an SSS rank mission, he then tells the man to inform the glory. Members all over the nation, an hour from now, he will issue a hunt for Pietro. A little girl is seen walking with her dad as she points up to something and tells him to look. Everyone that walked by on the street seemed to be drawn to something as they looked in the same direction. Even Pietro was staring at the exact same thing as the other civilians. It was an advertisement of his older self where it states to treat the elderly to a warm deal and to call the number with 76, Pietro thought that they really had went all out distributing those flyers, as he continued to walk through the streets, volunteers were seen handing out flyers to everyone telling them that they were from the Glory Welfare Foundation, Pietro takes one of the flyers but knew that there was no need to look for him, crumbling the paper within his hands, he throws it away as he was the one that was coming for them himself, walking down the street made Pietro realize that he needed more support in order to clear out the Glory Club, there was just one person that came into his mind, a dog sharp teeth soon comes across his mind as he thought about the person, as that person was able to make him feel uncomfortable, the scene changes to a badly worn down toilet in the middle of nowhere, Pietro enters the toilet and wonders why there were so many people that were here, he carefully walks past each of the men that slept on the ground in the toilet, he searches a wall that had various stickers placed on it, he was looking for a certain one that was between the organ sales and hookers, he finally finds it and presses it, the secret button reveals an entrance with a spiral staircase that led deep underground where a door with light coming out of it could be seen, Pietro entered the secret hideout with a surprised look on his face, he couldn't believe that it was as fancy as he could remember it from before, he could see all kinds of expensive merchandise hanging across the walls and rooms as branded goods could be seen, but something sharp points itself towards his neck, he looks at the person who was holding the sharp object, telling the person that silk clothes and jade dishware was something that they didn't need, as they were blind anyway, it was revealed to be a very beautiful woman who was holding the stick alongside with her pet dog, blind mommy, she curses at Pietro and stated that things were pretty peaceful recently, but it looks like she would have to take care of a corpse soon, she then starts to sniff the air around Pietro, giving him a rough idea about who he was, based on his smell, she sensed that he was a young one with no alcohol smell making him not one of the bums around here, but also that he reeks of bloodthirst too much to be just a petty thief. She comes to a realization and asked him if Glory was the one that sent him. As she took a swing at Pietro who manages to dodge her attack, 
they continued to battle against one another across the room as blind mommy constantly tried to attack Pietro while he causally dodges her attacks with ease. He soon finds himself with his back against the wall as she tells him that he was a little rat. Watch out, she says with a smile on her face as she takes another massive swing towards Pietro, but it turns out that she had threw her stick at Pietro who once again dodges it. She senses it and tells him that the wallpaper was expensive. Pietro started to wonder based on the accuracy of her thrown weapon at him, if she was really blind. Blind mommy doesn't stop her attack as she lunges herself towards our boy asking him if he had never seen a blind person as skilled as her, but something happens to her. As she launched herself, Pietro manages to grab onto her as she flew across the room, lucky man, with a casual swing, he sends her flying onto the sofa instead which causes her glasses to drop from her beautiful face, but as he faced her, she pulls out a knife inches away from Pietro's face, telling him that she was surprised that she didn't know that Glory had someone as skilled as himself which made her almost pissed herself, however, she couldn't sense any bloodthirst from him right now. She questions if Pietro wasn't feeling too pleasant in killing a disabled person, but what can he do? Someone's gotta die no matter what in their field, Alexander Miking, she called as her pet dog lunges its massive fang teeth towards Pietro, but something soon shocks her. Pietro was causally rubbing the tummy of her pet dog with ease, some time had passed to the point that blind mommy was touching Pietro's face, surprised to found out that he had actually became younger, she commented that his skin was so soft and that he didn't have that old person smell on him anymore, Pietro remained calm and tells her that she had been doing this to him for half an hour but she still couldn't believe that it was really possible, she soon drops herself onto the ground in a weird stance that prompted Pietro to ask her what she was doing, Blind Mommy replies back to him asking him if this was the way he had died. She wanted him to tell her so that she could try it out too. She tells him that the method might be the key to it. She questions him about what killed him from a gunshot to a stab wound to even poison. She wanted him to tell her so that she could also become like him. But a few smacks on the head from her boy made her stop questioning him. She then asked Pietro if he really wanted to fight Glory on his own. He tells her yes to which she asked him how. He tells her that he was going to go into the eye of the storm. I of the storm, said blind mommy as she asked him about what he was talking about, Pietro tells her that glory was out to get him, and that a way for him to have them in the palm of his hand and to make them to do what he wish, is to become a killer of the glory club, blind mommy was shocked to hear the idea that Pietro had as he tells her that she probably thought that it sure sounds like nonsense, but she soon comes into a sudden realization, she pointed out to Pietro that he had become younger and that now one recognizes him, if he becomes glory's killer, they'll basically be planning to capture Pietro while being in the palm of Pietro's hand. She leans close into his face and tells him that he was a terrifying man, but Pietro tells her to get off him as she was even scarier. But she tells him that it was impossible as he already knew that in order to become a killer of the glory club, he needed to be from the honor orphanage, even if the old Pietro was from there. The young version was just an outsider, so he couldn't become glory's killer right now. But Pietro wore a smile on his face as he tells her that there was just one way. The scene changes to a school where a voice asks another person if they see it as she was losing it. A group of girls are seen talking amongst themselves as they talked about how their school had become good again. They all looked at the new hot student, this way Pietro's method to become Glory's killer, which was to enter the Divine Honor High School. The girls continued to talk about Pietro about how his skin was clearer than their future and that his name was Kim Sungu which was freaking sexy to them. The girls approached him and told him that they needed to go to the auditorium. Pietro replies back that he understood. Hearing his voice made the girls comment that his tone was unique too. Divine Honor High School was a private school built by the Glory Foundation. It looks like an ordinary school from the outside, but its purpose was to raise killers. They discreetly operate a killer class, and Pietro was going to get into that class, which is the only other route to becoming a killer of the Glory Club. A banner is hung with the words Women's Ballet Creative Awards. Pietro soon enters the auditorium where groups of students were gathering together, a tiny sticker speaker was attached near Pietro's ear, blind mommy tells him that she had already told him earlier that the killer class only takes kids from the honor orphanage, which made her ask him how he was going to get in, but Pietro knew that there was just one exception, he starts to make his way to the front of the auditorium, he knew that it happens very rarely but it requires catching their attention, even blind mommy and her pet dog, couldn't believe what he was going to do, this is it, Pietro thought as he began to speak into the microphone, he introduces himself to the school as Kim Sungu and revealed that he had transferred into the school today, his reveals that his hobby is fighting and that his talent was also fighting, I am a killer, said Pietro as he looks at everyone, 
damn. Everyone was too stunned to speak as they listened to what Pietro had said to them, even blind mommy's dog understood what he said, but there were a group of people that remained hidden from the others as they stood inside a room above the auditorium, each of them held a different weapon in their hands as they wondered who Pietro was, but he knew that this was how he was going to make them scout him. Thanks for watching the latest part from the voice of Manwa. Subscribe for more content and don't forget to comment below what you want to see in the future. Like and share for more.